Hi, it's Wayne Myers with AVNirvana.com and a video tour of version 2 of the Direct Live calibration program for NAD products. There are some usability improvements, a vastly different look and feel, very new and fresh, and some accuracy improvements that we can talk about a little bit too. This is the first screen that you'll see after the initial splash screen. Any Direct Live capable NAD devices on the same network will show up here. If you're expecting one and it doesn't show up, you can refresh that screen right there. Let's look at the menu real quick. It gives us capabilities to save and load a project or to resume a previous session, which is uh, kind of handy. Uh, you must be logged into the Direct Live site in Sweden in order for this to work. They give you text size selections, a couple language possibilities to choose from. Appearance, there are three color themes. Maybe kind of a bright one like that. There is kind of a medium contrast screen. I like the dark high contrast screen myself. And of course, about, you can see what version of software you've got loaded up here. This is the most recent version. We'll select our device and move forward. From time to time, you'll see one of these little green uh, status boxes pop up on the right here. You can either click it away or wait a few seconds and they'll usually disappear. Let's look at navigation. There are two ways to navigate through the program. There is a navigation bar across the top which shows all the available screens and uh, you can select them to move forward or you can just move the, uh, select the blue navigation arrows in the bottom. Also, if you ever see like this where it looks like some of the information is hanging off to the right of the screen you're, you're viewing, just click and drag it into view. Here you see a number of devices that normally would not show up. Uh, they're a part of what I'm using to record this video. You can use either the hockey puck type microphone which was supplied with the device that I purchased. I prefer to use either a USB calibrated measurement mic or in this case a audio interface with an analog calibrated microphone. Select like so. Before you move forward, uh, let's take another quick look up here. Menu, same possibilities, save or load a project, resume a previous session. Very handy. Again, we can refresh here if a device hasn't shown up that you're expecting or you forgot to plug it in and you wanted to plug it in and then you get it to show up. A little bit of help. And let's move forward. On the previous screen, we saw, I forgot to mention, the three filter slots with the three programs as I have named them, the three filter programs in there already. You can select whichever one you want, turn it on or off. Of course, we want them off while we're doing the calibration. We'll select the recording device, proceed to volume calibration. They're available here also. On this screen, we do the volume calibration. A lot to look at here. There's a lot to love on this screen. Some really nice features. First of all, it, your master Apple volume will normally initialize to minus 40. That's a good safe level so you don't blast your ears or your speakers. I've made some adjustments here to minus 30 and about six, plus six, plus six and a half, which will yield about a 70 dB SPL while making the measurements later on. That's a pretty good level. 75 is a good recommended level. Now, one thing you'll notice here, we can see the uh, microphone level as it's being displayed here. Okay, now we're going to calibrate the relative volume levels. You can see the relative levels are being established and locked in there. And you'll notice it took a second for the subwoofer to click in. If you hesitate very long in between measurements or as you're making changes while you're moving along, your subwoofers might shut off. 
If that happens, you'll need to come back to this screen and give them a little nudge, like so, to get them turned back on again, or else you'll end up with some errors in your measurements. Now you can make relative adjustments to these levels if you haven't done so in your AVR, your receiver, or whatever. You can do it here. Get them mashed up fairly well, and they will all track beautifully. I love that feature. All track very nicely. And with the output level, I'm going to adjust those now. There we go. I've got them back at my preferred master output and mic gain levels. Again, that'll give me a 70 dB SPL measurement level as I'm doing the calibration measurements later on. And again, you also want to make sure that all of your filters are off while you're doing this. The green zone for output levels is between minus 8 and minus 24. So minus 16 is the midpoint. I like to shoot for about a minus 16 to minus 12 range to get really nice usable levels well above the noise floor for the direct live calibration algorithms to work with. If you have set them carefully in your AVR, you won't have to do much here. This gives you the opportunity to kind of fine tune them a little bit if you need to. I'm not going to fine tune them further than that for, for the purposes of this exercise here. But that's what that's for. Again, you want all your filters turned off while you're doing this. A little insert here. I wanted to emphasize how nice it is to be able to make adjustments to relative speaker output levels or to the out master output level or to the mic gain level without having to have the test tones or the test noise running. Now we'll proceed to our next screen here. We'll go up to the top bar up here, select seating arrangement. You can use the chair arrangement, a sofa arrangement, either focused or wide imaging. I think wide imaging is a waste of time myself, but if you don't have sharp imaging, why bother? That's just me, okay? So, select arrangement. We're gonna work with the chair arrangement here. Move on to making measurements. Again, a lot to love on this screen as well. I'm just going to quickly show you that there are more measurement points available if you use the sofa seating arrangement. Remember this though, if you cannot change seating arrangement or your microphone, your calibrated microphone selection once you have started taking measurements or you'll lose all your measurements and you'll have to go back and start over again. Just a good thing to know there. So let's go back to arrange our seating arrangement and we're gonna work with the chair arrangement moving forward. The first point to measure is the main position. That is the point where the microphone would be if your head was in its proper resonating position. It would be right in the center between your ears, right in the middle of your brain there. The accuracy of your mic placement for this first measurement point is very important. It will directly affect the placement of your center image where, when you're listening to music later on, so you want to get it just right. This is an area where the Direct Live team has made some improvements to the algorithm in terms of how they calculate the timing and the levels for placement of the center image, yet the algorithm will always be dependent upon proper placement of that first mic measurement point. We're gonna go ahead and measure this first position here. As you probably recall, that last measurement is the left 
front speaker again it's just checks and balances if the final left front speaker measurement does not match the initial left front speaker measurement pretty closely you know something has happened in between and they throw out the whole batch of measurements for that mic position you will see the individual speaker curves you can look at them individually here kind of get a little sanity check make sure they make sense for where you're headed and what you're doing there's one of those green little bars up there put that out of the way if you need to now we're going to select the next point to make a measurement at remember the order here doesn't matter i've been told by the folks at direct live that you can actually just pretty much go at random after that initial the initial measurement point you can position the mic wherever you want to fairly close to the seating position and pretty much go at random and i've actually tried that you get just great results that way so the positioning is not crucial. People look at the the two, you know, front and rear rectangles and figure try to figure out how far is that? Where should I position that? How repeatable does it need to be? It really does not matter. That's one of the beautiful things about Direct Live. The algorithms have the intelligence to determine what information is useful and what information is not useful and move forward with the useful information. So you don't have to be that precise about where these are placed. So we'll select the next point here. We'll measure again. I'm going to abort because I forgot to move the microphone. Isn't that nice? You can abort a measurement and not lose your place. Really nice. Okay, hold on a second. I'm going to pause.